So hello and welcome to the Mega Bird Run channel. So we're in a different part this time around and uh, I'll do another video about that another time in the Mega Bird Run notes because it's not really to do with the van but uh, it's really nice here and it's well worth a visit. So today's video is going to be about the All Powers S200 auxiliary battery which you've probably seen in previous uh, sort of shorts and uh, announcements and things but uh, the last few weeks I've been working on bits and pieces and I'm going to put all that together in this video. So, see you at home, because I'm going to go. I'm off. See you later. Now I'm back home uh, at last. Um, I had some old chap come up to me to say that uh, I was parking in the place I shouldn't be. Um, in fact, it's next to my brother-in-law's house. And I just said that uh, my brother-in-law just lives next door to you. And uh, I'm going for a walk in the park. But it was like, well, no, you don't park there. What is it about some people? I don't really understand. Anyway, uh, I think that probably distracted me because on the way home, I realised I was halfway home, I hadn't put my window wipers on and it had started to rain. So it had been raining since uh, I was driving back and that was about three or four hours ago. So it's uh, very, very wet. Anyway, we're going to head into the van and we'll talk about the, the battery and all sorts of bits and pieces because I don't want to stand out here in the rain. So I'm glad to be back in my little office um, uh, away from the rain because it started to get a bit heavier as I was coming into, into here. So yeah. I'm um, hoping this is going to improve because I'll be heading to the UK soon. And anyway, I've got my little box of goodies here. Now, we're going to talk about the battery, but I want to talk about a few other electrical related things. Uh, so, in this little box, I've been keeping things um, aside for other projects. Now, well, this one's not an electrical thing, that's some epoxy resin. Uh, some epoxy resin so I need to um, use that to repair the door pillar which uh, if you look at some other videos earlier on you'll see what I'm talking about oh that's another one of those air freshener things I've got a reversing camera which came with my dash cam years ago when I bought it and I never got around to fitting it so that's the bog standard reversing camera that uh, came with it but there's a, a power lead for it which has to be connected somewhere i think that if you look at um, one of my videos i think it was uh might have been late last year uh i was fiddling around with the light so if i put that on it might lighten me up a bit better oh, that's a lot better isn't it yeah um and so as I was taking that apart, I came across another cable, another power cable, with like a sort of chocolate block type thing on it, which I think is there to power, you know, a sort of um, um, beacon. Not like on a police car, but an orange one. Um, because this being a slow vehicle, and it, uh, having certain applications, uh, you know, sort of in, in parks and things like that, when it's got a, a pickup, rear on it um then they have a beacon on them i was planning on using this cable this power cable redundant power cable to power this and that, that's another future project anyway uh, for the summer i've got uh, some nice fans and in fact i'm coming to the thing that i wanted to come to to do with the battery so i think i'll put that box away put the camera away as well so I have this power lead a cigarette lighter lead with um, a normal sort of jack socket on the end um, I have some adapter jack sockets as well and the idea is to use this uh, linked to the 12 volt battery in the van uh, to charge up the auxiliary battery so I'm going to have to do some fiddling around and I'll show you how that works. So my first little experiment is to power up my laptop from the battery. So 
there's a toggle switch. That's not the toggle switch, that's the on-off switch. There's a toggle switch on the side. Hopefully you can see it, because I can't. Which toggles between AC and the USB ports. So as you can see here, it's fluctuating quite a bit. But it says it's going to take probably anywhere, anywhere between 3.8 and 4.4 um, hours to, to charge up my laptop. So the idea is, is that I try to discharge the battery a little bit because it was at 99 hours and uh, I want to, to try a few things but I don't want it to be at 99 hours so I'm trying to flatten the battery a little bit. If you can hear a whirring noise there's a fan inside that when you put the AC um, toggle on then that comes on. Uh, so yeah it's a pretty high tech bit of thing. Oh, it's gone up to 79, 7 point that's because my laptop has gone to sleep. So that does fluctuate quite a bit. Um, gone to sleep and it says 8.5 hours. So if I wake it up, hopefully that should drop. There we go. 5.6. 4.5. And I've just noticed that although it's toggled to the AC, I've plugged in my external microphone, so that's going a little bit low, and it's actually charging up as well. So it looks like, I don't know, I'm a bit confused. It looks like the AC toggle works on the AC toggle, but when you plug a USB thing in, it still works. So I'm a little bit puzzled. That's easily uh, done, really, with me. Uh, with me, it's sort of confusing, not putting my window wiper on, because I've only got one, and uh, confusing little and old in my last video. Um, and lots of other things, um, I get very puzzled and very easily. Anyway, um, so I put my laptop on charge, it's just in front of me, I won't bother you showing you, you can have seen it already. Um, and the auxiliary battery has dropped down to 95%, so I had that on charge for around 10 15 minutes. It's still say, it's say 99 hours, so. Uh, it's not very significant, but it's dropped it down enough for me to want to experiment and see if I can charge the battery up from the 12 volt battery of the van, which is what I sort of had in mind with this. Um, I'll just unplug it. This lead is just a normal power lead. Okay, you've got a fuse in this side um, that hasn't blown, uh, so that's good. <laughs> But um, if you can see from the, the footage I've taken while I was booking about, um, in fact, it's the opposite. In fact, it's not the 12-volt um, battery that is going to charge the auxiliary battery. In fact, from what I can see, the auxiliary battery is charging the 12-volt battery because when I switch it on and off on the, the multi-plug, um, it goes up to 12.1 yet um, it doesn't change any figures on the front of the, the battery's display so this is very very curious because either way it's still an advantage because it means that I can use this auxiliary battery to top up the 12 volt battery because everything else is running off it um, you know I mean I can I can run sort of certain small things off this auxiliary battery uh, as I'm driving. For example, uh, at the moment I've got um, the the light here and my um, Bluetooth speaker, which has just stopped working. Uh, it's obviously listening to some music and it doesn't work anymore. I don't know why, but um, I can use those um with them plugged into the auxiliary battery because they don't really take a lot of top up charge so that's one thing talking about the external speaker because i want to digress a little bit because this is going to be future content um you might have seen uh, i don't know whether i actually put it out or not uh i had a car a car puride um sort of system for christmas and uh Although I've fiddled around with it a little bit, I haven't actually put it in my van yet 
because I don't know where to, to actually put it at the moment. The idea is that car pure system will have to run off a 12 volt battery. The output for the sound to this Bluetooth speaker, which is on my sun visor, will have to um, be through a sound jack because the idea really is to use my phone to basically clone the phone onto the carpuride and then the carpuride basically you, you, you're using your phone on the carpuride screen it's a seven inch I think it's a seven inch screen um, so it's more practical than using your phone really uh, and you've got a sat nav and you all sorts of you can listen to the radio on it and all this sort of thing uh, but it'd just be logical for me to have a, a sound jack out of the carpuride straight into the speaker. So basically, the fact that this is going to this auxiliary battery is going to top up the 12 volt battery might not be a bad thing. What I'm trying to do is to try to take off the um, effort or the, the pressure basically off the battery, off the 12 volt battery, because unfortunately in this van. Uh, it can be a bit hit and miss as to whether you can start the the van or not, depending on what you've got plugged in. So generally, I have to unplug everything. Um, I've found out to my cost in the past that the the headlights drain the battery very, very quickly, um, amazingly quickly. Well, I've got the, the lead I showed you earlier, the DC lead, plugged into the auxiliary battery. And that is plugged into here. So we have 13.1 volts, which is a lot, well, a bit more than what's usually displayed. If I unplug it, without knocking the camera over, it should go down. So it's now at 12.6, 12.5. Can it go any lower? No, I don't think it is. So if I plug it back in again, it should go up. So that proves to me that the auxiliary battery is charging the 12 volt battery up. Now, if I switch the ignition on, it's going to drop 12.2. Now, if I switch the headlights on, it should drop considerably normally. Uh, but it hasn't. It's sort of dropped and gone back up. Whereas normally it would drop. So headlights off. Now what else can we try? Let's try the glow plugs. So it's heating the glow plug up. It's dropping a little bit. We start up. Put the blower on, headlights on, window wipers on. I'm going to turn the ignition off. So at 12.2. So if I switch all of those off, that's 12.5. So headlights off. Um, I'll turn the ignition back on because the, it's on part of the window wiper. So window wiper off. 12.4. 12.7 what else have I got left switched on nothing okay so as you can see this could be an advantage and so if I have to put the headlights on when we've got low light light today because it's raining um, I have to make a mental note to to switch them off before I get out of the van there is supposed to be a warning system that when you open the driver's door there's a, a sort of like buzzer that sounds uh, to tell you you've left your headlights on but um, it doesn't work, so I think there's a false contact or something. That's another thing I need to look at. Um, so, yeah, I think that it seems to be a good thing. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick mention of something I, I bought recently. Uh, you've probably seen one before, but this is a, a key ring. Um, where's my keys? Oh, they're in the ignition. <laughs> it's a key ring USB charger. So, basically, you put that on your key ring and that plugs in to there okay so you can carry it around 
but when you're using it, you unplug it, you've got the two different sorts of plugs. You've got USB-C, and I suspect this one's a Macintosh one. Not having a Macintosh or an iPhone, I've no idea, but anyway. And you've got a magnet between the two, so you, you see it, it pings together like that. And basically you've got your two female plugs there. You plug the, what is the Macintosh one? It could be something else, you'll have to tell me, but a mini USB thing into the small slot if you've got an Android phone and put it the right way around because you're know, wrecking the plug. And that plugs into there. Then you plug the USB-C into your phone with difficulty. And then I can plug that into my auxiliary battery. So it's very practical. Uh, if I need to charge that up, if I need to charge my external mic up, I can charge it up on the external auxiliary battery, taking pressure off the 12 volt battery. But as I say, if, as I think, this cable charges up the 12 volt battery, um, well, all well and good, I'd say, unless it, I don't want to put strain on anything, damage anything, but again, you'll have to tell me. But yeah, good. So I'm going to look at something else now. It's to do with the battery. Um, I think as time goes on and I find new things that I can do with this battery, then I'll do a video or something, uh, or uh, just a, um, a Mega Brother Notes video or something like that to, to talk about that. But this is generally why I wanted an auxiliary battery. And I wasn't too clear on why I wanted an auxiliary battery until now until i've done this video and realized that it has a lot of benefits in this van and i'm really glad that i bought it i don't feel so bad about it now because although i got it on special offer um in fact i'll tell you how much it was it was 116 euros okay and i'd seen on amazon for 160 170 euros but i bought this from the all powers site i didn't buy it from amazon and they had a special offer on so if you ever want to buy an all-powered battery, this small one or um, a bigger one, um, then keep an eye on their site, they have special offers. Anyway, on to something else. So I want to go back to the, the holder for the um, auxiliary battery in the dashboard that Adam has kindly 3D printed for me. In fact, we've gone through three prototypes for that. So as you can see, the... Um, it actually clicks into the into the dashboard, but um, I've had a bit of difficulty taking the battery out. Okay, I have to hold on to the dashboard and pull. Um, and ideally, uh, you don't want to be pulling too much without holding the dashboard, because the dashboard itself is extremely flimsy and it's very thin plastic. So um, yeah, everything is plastic in here. So I've managed to get the battery out, and I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to sort of like sand down a little bit the, uh, there's like a raised section, I'll show you on this, this prototype, or not, which I think is, is changed on each prototype, but there's a raised section here, I don't know if you can see that or not, and it actually, if I move my hands out of the way, it actually slopes down. Uh, and that is obviously to create a bit of friction for the, the battery to, to fit. But uh, in the main, on each prototype, um, there's been a clip. Um, there's like a groove in the, in the top of, the, of each one, each time getting wider um, from the first to the third version, which I've now got in the van. And um, on the third version that's in the van... Um, Adam has had to actually manually trim with a knife the edges uh, of the groove because on the the groove itself at the back again you've got a raised section uh, that enables the um, adapter so if I hold it there like that you can see there's a raised section there and uh, that actually clips into into the dashboard. For now, 
it's fine. I mean, it, it fits in the dashboard. It doesn't move about. Um, if you um, pull on it and uh, push it upwards, it will unclip at the bottom. The top is another matter. You'll need a tool of some sort to push down on the top of the, the adapter to enable it to come out. But what I need to do now is try to work out um, how to be able to take the battery in and out easily. But apart from that, it's fine. But we did do some footage of us trying to fiddle around with these three prototypes. So I'm going to share that with you now so you can see what a faff it's been for us both, or more for Adam, because he's been very patient in preparing these. And I thank him so, so much for, for all his work on this project, because it's all custom made. You can't buy that. You can't, you know, there's no way you can get it. And that is the joy of 3D printing if you know what you're doing, if you know how to draw things um, in a in a CAD application, which uh, unfortunately I don't. I probably could if I could get the CAD application to work on my computer, but it won't, uh, the free one. Um, but it's a future project. It's something I'd like to try doing. So Adam has finally come with the... Uh new holder for the auxiliary battery so we're going to see if it fits in the dashboard and uh, well we'll see how it goes okay let's go let's see if it goes let's see if it goes in it goes in but it doesn't click, click. Okay. all the way it's uh, nearly there it's nearly there but I just need to make the spacer a little bit larger. Uh, okay, I'll see. It's about so it's nearly there, isn't it? This part that needs to be larger about one millimeter because this part goes deeper. This is yeah. This got a lip. It's thickness. That's got a lip. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Does it does it change anything not having the battery inside it? Uh, no. The thing is. It would be good to know how big is that lip, like yeah, that. but like that, that I have uh, an access to it. Oh no. Let's see, that's what we have calipers for. Yeah, I'm not as high tech as you are, I'm afraid. It is like there. It's three millimeters. Three millimeters. Yep. Right, we'll try again with a second version. A V2. So now, first it should get in and then it should get in. And wow. I think Yay. we're in, like Flynn. Clips in. Yeah, and it doesn't move. It's holding. It's holding well. Let's see. Well done. With the device. Now we need to slide it in. It's going and going. I think we need to take it out, put it in and clips in <laughs> if it doesn't go, but for now it's not sliding in. To be honest with you, I don't think it's too much of a problem. Uh, uh, Carefully, I don't want to pull the whole dashboard <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. I'll just put it in here and then we put it back. Because it's strange because it seems tighter than the other one. Uh, yeah, because it's printed uh, with 100% uh, fill-in. Like this, it's uh, it's much more rigid. But it needs a bit more force to, to get in. A bit easier. I don't know why it's blocking here. Ah, uh, there. Again, there. And it should be... No, it's not clipsing now. Ah, uh, or... I guess it's just it's less flexible with something inside it. It's it's this. So we're going like this. Make sure that it's well in and then go in. Just cut it what? out a little bit. We'll try filing it or something. Yeah, yeah, because it, yeah. it's not a lot. The tension of the battery being inside just makes it less flexible it, when you it, put yeah, it in. It, it might change the, the form. Yeah. The problem. We could try it this way. <laughs> mm. It's holding harder. So yeah, finding a bit should be well enough. Come out. 
Oh, no. <laughs> 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 come out. Come out, though. Oh, Oh, now we're really. Uh... Uh, uh, this one is, is holding a bit more than it should. Yeah. Is it coming out? Almost. Just stick in the corner to start from this side. <laughs> it can <it, it> get <laughs> out completely, but. I just don't want half my dashboard to come out with it. <laughs> well, leave, leave me to do it, I'll get on with it. So... Okay. Because then, if, at least just, if, if, I break, to push it if I break something, I can blame myself. Yeah. I don't want to blame you for breaking mm. my dashboard. <laughs> All that's needed is just a little bit of leverage here. So, we'll take that out and I'll, I'll okay. file the inside of the top. That's... Okay, well, well, we'll look at that uh, another time. So, part three. We tried to we'll think about um, sanding this, but. Uh, Adam has come up with a, a third prototype, so we're going to see if this works. So let's see if it, oh, you can already press it in. Huh? It will be difficult. <laughs> now, now the lip is too big. <laughs> <laughs> I no, uh, we have to reverse the order. We have to put it in and then press it in. Without the power bank, let's see if it goes in. And uh, not very well. We just need to cut the borders, I think. It's okay. And small revision. Yeah. Don't want to damage the pliers too. Snap it. Snap it there. Okay. We'll see if it goes now. If not, uh, repeat. That's almost there. Well, All it's we managed to click. It's Adam's managed to yeah, click I one think, side. I think in. it's okay. There. There we go. We're in. And now it's just a little bit here. But it seems to be holding. Yeah, because the lip didn't the, li the lip isn't flat, it's sort yeah, of yeah, curved. Yeah, yeah. I just we try to, to see. It's just a little push. It's just a little push to be done. Nothing more. And you know what? I think it's going to hold. Yeah, it's gonna hold, but it's not gonna go in because now. Okay, you got it's a band. Curved. Yeah, 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 it's curved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit with a, I don't know, screwdriver or something like this. Needle nose pliers. Yeah, yeah maybe. That might be enough. Well, I was quite surprised I managed to take it out with those. The the second prototype came out yeah. fairly well. And now I'll try to. The one that was put upside down. So you've got my finger in this on the. Right. No, because yeah. I don't want to break it, uh, to, to, to break the uh, the holder. No. It's, it's not the dashboard, it's the holder. Uh, I have a plastic one that will leave it, uh, that, that, uh, that will get it out. So just the little lip, lip work. Yeah? Lip work. <laughs> done. Excellent. And it's not going anywhere. So that's completely flat. How did you yeah. do this? How I just to... cut a little bit the lip and then when, ins uh, when I inserted the, uh, the converter I just picked it a little bit up with a plastic piece so like this it clicked. And it holds. And it holds. Yeah. It's in. And what about taking it out? Uh, I didn't try it, but I think uh, it's possible. Yeah, it, it will move, but I, I want to pull now because uh, it holds well. <laughs> okay, well, I'll do that later on when you're not here. <laughs> so if I break it, you won't shout at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say not to leave the battery in the, in the car because of you know, getting damp and so on. But I know. They, they, do you think they, it'll be a risk of damp? I, uh, here, I don't think you have a lot of condensation. Uh, you don't well, have some okay. damp on the... Uh, Usually we get some on the floor. But, uh, it's not on the windows, to... so I don't think so. You have a lot of electronics here, and it's okay. True, yeah. So, well, I have my light that fell off, but um, it's back on now. Uh, ju um, just, just, <laughs> just to keep it charged, uh, more or less, and that's it. Yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you is, is there a possibility of having... Um, you know, you, you said that this is, is a DC yeah. plug that is 12 volt. Yeah. Here I uh, I'm not. Would would it be possible to have 
an tracker, adapter yeah, yeah, plugging from yeah. that into that. Uh, sure, uh, not a problem. Just to check if it's really uh, 12 volts and what's the uh, uh, amperage needed because it needs and it needs to to be able to handle a current that's needed by this and that's okay. it. Okay, okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Not at all. So I hope you enjoyed those few short clips of us messing about. Uh, that was done over a few months. Um, I think it probably took him probably two months or so to to work on this project with Christmas in between. So uh, yeah, he's done he's done pretty well really. And the next project will be that fuse box that I keep mentioning. I mentioned it in the the yearly review for twenty twenty three. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something that's going to have to be done at some point. So I'll leave it there. Uh, hope I've given you a little bit of interesting useless information about what i'm up to with the auxiliary battery and um, i'm always interested to hear about your thoughts about this uh, particular subject and other subjects so feel free to, to get in touch and talk about it take care of yourselves thanks for watching give us some support give us a like give us a share you can buy me a coffee if you want to uh, just check the link below. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the video. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.